Oh my god, it's getting closer. Male. Wow, it's massive. At remote outposts on the other side of the world, something has been on the attack. They can just rip your arm off. Leaving behind bizarre reptilian prints and reports of something huge. Somewhere between 20 and possibly 30 feet in length. Could dragons of myth and legend really exist? I ran from my house and I saw the boy who was laying on the ground, hurt and screaming. Or are they known animals that are growing to monster sizes? Could the habitat here support a large reptile like that? Absolutely. Or prehistoric predators that have somehow gone undetected until now? It was a 3,000 pound killing machine. And could a real creature be responsible for one of history's greatest myths? Monster Quest goes in search of a living legend. Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers. On Monster Quest. The Asia-Pacific region stretches from the mountainous regions of China down to the vast islands of Indonesia and the arid deserts of Australia. Thousands of remote islands dot the waters of the Western Pacific, some inhabited, some untouched by man. And according to legend, there may be something else here, a monster predator with a taste for human flesh. Uh, a gigantuous uh, lizard a monitor lizard. The majority of sightings seem to be of creatures of various stages of maturity, like uh, 20 to 25 to 27 foot in length. They're very scary animals. They can move like lightning, they've got razor sharp claws and very powerful jaws. The creature is described as a huge dragon-like reptile with an elongated neck and skull. Its length is said to be up to 30 feet long, as large as a modern day bus. Astounding evidence of these creatures may lie in aboriginal cave paintings found across Australia, from Panoramity in the south to Kimberley in the north. The paintings, such as this one, depict a creature larger than a human, while others, such as this one, are tied to stories of large reptiles that brought with them fire and destruction. Precise dating is difficult, but experts say most of the paintings are recent, less than 10,000 years old. While this stands as proof that the Aborigines had encountered terrifying reptiles for centuries, could this also be the first documented evidence of a monster lizard living until recent times? The oral history passed down through generations of Aboriginal people also speaks of a giant beast, a creature that was feared by all. When you look at the translation, it actually says Big Bad Goanna, and Goanna is our name for a monitor lizard over here. Peter Hancock is a journalist and author on Aboriginal culture. His interviews with native descendants indicates that encounters with the creature may have been common. Well, it must have been horrific. I mean, they hadn't got walls or anything like that, so you'd have had to just keep guard all the time. These stories, it seems, are founded in fact. But when I looked into the details of it, it was pretty obvious it was about Megalania. Megalania Prisca, meaning the ancient giant butcher. As a member of the monitor lizard family, fossil evidence found in Australia suggests this giant roamed the earth during the Pleistocene era, almost two million years ago. Modern-day monitor lizards range in size from 6 inches to 10 feet and are found throughout the equatorial ranges of Africa, Asia, and Australia. Fossil remains indicate that Megalania may have survived until a mere 40,000 years ago, avoiding extinction longer than most of its contemporaries. But if 10,000-year-old cave drawings show Megalania, that theory may have to be rewritten. It was clearly the top-of-the-line predator in the ancient Australian ecosystem. John Long is the head of sciences at the Melbourne Museum, home of a life-size skeletal replica 
of Megalania. Well, this is the skeleton of Megalania, which was the, the largest terrestrial reptile to walk the face of Australia for the last 60 million years. It was about seven metres long, we estimate, maybe weighing up to a tonne. But are stories of the Megalania confined to the pages of early history? This man says no. It's rare, it's uh, seldom seen, it, uh, it lives in the most remote country. Rex Gilroy is an author and cryptozoologist. He describes a frightening account of a huge reptile, estimated to be 30 feet in length, that terrorized the Australian village of Euroa, Victoria, in 1890. It was raiding farms, eating livestock for weeks. Uh, it instituted this reign of terror, as I say, going from farm to farm, being seen, killing the odd cow or something. A search party was formed to hunt down the beast and kill it. Armed with guns and accompanied by dogs, they eventually chased the beast back into the surrounding bush. And, according to Gilroy, encounters with the giant lizards continue to this day. 1,400 miles from Euroa is Alice Springs, located in Australia's Northern Territory. It is the site of another purported Megalania sighting. We do have modern day accounts. A group of Aborigines in Central Australia, for example, were camped one night on the side of the road towards Alice Springs. And one of these creatures came across the desert, walked through their campground, and they scattered, ran back to the utilities they were in, and drove off, left all their gear. Here on the Blue Mountains, uh, some boy scouts and a scout master were out in the Wollamai and uh, they went to sit down on a log. And as they approached it, the log got up and walked away. And the log was about uh, 22 feet in length. Could these stories of the giant creature be describing a megalania? Long says no. You need a large population of them to be breeding and we'd certainly find dead ones. We've got no evidence at all. Not a single shred that Megalania has been around beyond about 40,000 years ago. But Gilroy says he has proof that the monster lives on. This is the famous Maruya track that uh, was found back in 1979. This one was uh, Humdinger, so I, I was able to uh, make a good cast of that. During the winter of 1979, Gilroy received a phone call from a farmer who claimed to have seen a 20-foot-long greyish lizard roaming near Marulia on the New South Wales coast. Marulia is only 400 miles from Euroa, the location of the late 1800s attacks. He'd come out of jungle and walked across his paddock. The farmer told Gilroy there were fresh tracks in his field. Gilroy immediately drove hundreds of miles to Marulia to investigate. While most of the tracks had been washed away in a rainstorm, Gilroy was able to cast one distinguishable track. He's convinced it's from a modern-day monster. And recently, in January 2008, Gilroy says he discovered massive lizard-like tracks across a forest trail about 185 miles from the tracks found in 1979. So they were coming at an angle through the bush and went over there, which would, if they kept on going, bring them out across the other road. Gilroy made a cast of what appears to be a reptile print, enormous and nearly identical to the one cast in 1979. Yeah, about 12 inches across and about the same. I estimated the creature that made them might have been about anywhere between 20 to 25 feet. We have a very pointed claws here, what's left of it, and you've got the back of the heel, there might have been a bit here, it's just the way that they walk. For the first time ever, Monster Quest will have this recent find analysed by a world-renowned paleontologist. Meanwhile, an expedition sets out in search of more proof of giant lizards. Here in Australia's Wollemi Forest, the area of repeated reports, the team will be led by Rex Gilroy himself. And you're talking about catching a Megalania. It will do the catching. It was a 3,000 pound killing machine of full growth. 
Gilroy will be joined by Australian wildlife expert and explorer, Gary Opit. Rex's cast are truly remarkable. Uh, they really show uh, a joint monitor lizard's foot impressed into the earth. Opit is an environmental scientist and has an extensive history of tracking and identifying animals in the wild. If anyone knows the land better than Gilroy, it's Opit. Rounding out the team is U.S. reptile expert Tony Girard. Could there be potentially a very, very large monitor of one of the known species? Potentially, you know, reptiles continue to grow all their life. Girard points out that Australia is home to one possible candidate, the Parenti, the fourth largest living lizard species, with some individuals reaching eight feet in length. But could a mutated Parenti be responsible for this track? Gilroy doesn't think so. Well, I'm always open to another species being found, but uh, I'd say we've got Megalania. In their quest for a giant, whether living relic or known species, Gilroy, Gerard and Opit will head into the Willamie National Forest located in the Blue Mountains, 30 miles west of Sydney. Its vast size has earned it the nickname the Grand Canyon of Australia. We have some of the densest country in eastern Australia. People walk off the beaten track here and get lost and they're not seen again. The team will concentrate their search on the western edge near the site where Gilroy collected his most recent print. The real interior has yet to be explored. It's remote, it's isolated, it's full of swamp land, rainforest, jungle. In this tangled, impenetrable habitat of eucalyptus and banksias plants, the hiding places for a giant lizard are innumerable. The great challenge is that most of the uh, animal life is fairly cryptic, and that is, it, uh, they're not easy to see. Given the rough terrain of the forest, the bulk of this expedition will be conducted on foot. What I'm taking you to is where there's been tracks found of Megalania prisca. Keep your wits about you, don't wander off in the middle of nowhere. Gilroy never ventures into the wild without essential tracking gear. We bring the class of Paris and water, at least enough for one or two tracks of something. Opet and Gerard will also carry cameras in case they spot anything unusual. Uh, it would be a wonderful thing if we are able to actually get evidence for the existence of this species. Oh, this one will go around and eventually goes down the bottom of the valley into the mining area. Uh, but you do come to a, a spot where there's a, a just in from the roads, a 200 foot high volcanic plug that's not on the record. Then, a positive sign. There is something here the creature would need, food. And you can see a kangaroo footprint. It's only a small one, a young one, because there's also swamp wallabies here as well. So, well, it could be looking at a wallaby track, but you can see the, the large toenails, and you can see the, the, the foot has, has two toes. Uh, the smaller toe on the outside. Also just here, the tail imprint. You can see where the kangaroo's tail uh, has brushed the dirt aside. If Megalania does exist, it would certainly be the forest's apex predator. It would be an ambush predator and it would spend its time conserving energy, uh, waiting beside game trails and waiting for kangaroos or wombats to come down those trails. There's an abundant enough food source here, especially for a reptile which doesn't have to eat uh, on the same regular basis that a mammal does. While food sustains an individual, reproduction sustains a population. And new discoveries indicate that large reptiles may have a startling ability never thought possible. He was produced without the genetic input of a father. Today, as sightings of strange dragon-like creatures continue in the Asia-Pacific region, history reminds us that dragon legends are age-old. Images of fire-breathing, winged, serpent-like beasts are chronicled in cultures throughout the world. In European culture, dragons are depicted as demonic, evil creatures, while Chinese pottery and carvings represent them 
as more benevolent beings. While science tells us that dragons never existed, several theories abound as to the origin of these legends. One suggestion is that they are a culmination of three animals humans fear the most. Serpents, large cats, found in the Middle Ages. But equally as terrifying as monsters of myth, some believe a real animal has survived beyond the prehistoric past, escaped extinction, and still walks the earth. The difference is that Megalania could have lived in swamps, could have got away. You know, it was a different animal altogether. It was a scavenger. Historian Peter Hancock says Aboriginal elders tell stories of a giant lizard swimming into the ocean and fighting with one of the sea's most ferocious animals. Somehow or other, he gets on the wrong side of the great white shark, and uh, the great white shark attacks him, and they have a fight, and Megalania drags himself ashore. But these are still bright, vibrant stories from something that supposedly was the, the last big carnivore and predator that they ever had to deal with thousands of years ago. And you'd think the memories would fade, but they haven't. And the impression being that they were around until quite recently. Rex Gilroy is convinced they still are. Definitely. I've got the cast tracks. Aided by Australian Gary Opit and American reptile expert Tony Gerard. Gilroy is deep in the Walami National Forest in search of the giant, Megalania. You've got to be silent in the bush if you're going to find anything. A, a big search party gets nowhere most times. The vast vegetation and thick underbrush make it a perfect habitat for an ambush predator. One of the, the best ways of finding evidence uh, of, uh, of the animal life in any locality is to simply move through those areas that have a nice sandy soil and they leave quite uh, distinct tracks. In addition to tracking the creature, they have a plan to lure it in. Gary and I plan to put out some camera traps with some, um, some meat for bait, monitor lizards in addition to being predators or, or active scavengers. They approach an area where visitors to the National Forest reported something large moving through the trees in the winter of 2003. It actually walked right through this locality uh, and they were so amazed that uh, a couple of them wanted to actually follow the animal. Opit believes it's a good location to place the bait. Here we have some nice pieces of beef, good enough to throw on the barbie, but uh, we're going to see if we can attract uh, uh, a giant goanna. Like other monitor lizards, Megalania would have an incredible sense of smell and be able to detect the scent of meat from more than one mile away. We'd like to set them up where um, maybe a little bit high where, where the, uh, the wind is going to carry the smell of our bait because a monitor can pick up on carrying type smell from, from quite a ways away. Cameras will be positioned to record images of anything that attempts to take the bait. How does that look, Gary? Hi, that, yeah, that yeah. looks great. I think right. looks good. The team moves on to find a location for their second camera trap. This is where we found the last batch of tracks about 12 months ago, so I'm always confident we're going to find something around here. That looks pretty good. Good open area. The edge between two communities, you get the most amount of action. You've got more sunlight coming in, better variety of vegetation. And we'll put in a couple of baits here, so we can have one, yeah, one about that high, and then one a bit lower. With the cameras in place, the team heads back into the forest to continue the search for tracks and other signs. As they make their way through the brush, Gerard notices something about the habitat that suggests that they are on the right track to finding a possible giant reptile. Termite mounds, uh, in a way, are related to the monitor lizards, and a lot of monitor lizards lay their eggs in termite mounds. Uh, they excavate a a chamber uh, down inside, lay the eggs, and the termites come and repair around it. Um, termite mounds stay remarkably temperature constant on the inside, so it's great for, uh, for egg incubation. The lack of a viable breeding population has long been an argument against the existence of Megalania today. And critics cite it as a major factor 
against the existence of most cryptid creatures. But a recent discovery could turn that argument upside down. Megalania's modern relatives, Komodo dragons, can multiply without a mate. Called parthenogenesis, it is the process of producing offspring without male fertilization, and it has surprised the experts. There are a handful of, of reptiles out there that do reproduce parthenogenically. Uh, it came as a big shock, I think, to most people that Komodos were capable of doing it. Nate Nelson is the head zookeeper for Sedgwick County Zoo in Wichita, Kansas. The zoo's newest Komodo dragon was hatched parthenogenically. He's a parthenogenic offspring. He was produced without the genetic input of a father. That means the female lays eggs, which then develop normally without fertilization from a male. Nelson says the females can lay up to 20 or more eggs. Of those, not all are fertile. And of course, only the fertile ones hatch. There is reason to believe that dragons that others use are reproducing parthenogenically. We're just not keeping the eggs. The zoo recently incubated some of the eggs and produced these two hatchlings. Uh, at this size right now, this, this dragon is really fast, really agile, uh, and that's an adaptation for getting up in trees and away from the predatory big adults, and they'll live up in the tree for up to a year. But does this mean Megalania could maintain a population through parthenogenesis? Nelson points out a problem with that theory. It would be impossible to get a female, because you cannot get the chromosome combination that makes a female. So reproduction without a male is possible but only for a generation at a time. Still, believers maintain that a large population wouldn't be needed to support a species if that species was concentrated in a small area with sufficient food supply and places to hide. The Walemi National Forest is just such a place. And there may be others. If history supports the possibility of monster lizards in Australia, could other nearby lands with populations of large reptiles also harbor giants? Indonesia may hold the answer, where the world's largest known dragons live today. Indonesia a cluster of 17,508 islands in Southeast Asia, of which only about 6,000 are populated. Of those, five are home to a known living relative to Megalania, the deadly Komodo dragon. Is there a top-line predator? There's nothing bigger or badder. Trooper Walsh is a retired biologist from the Smithsonian National Zoo. He has spent his life researching the Komodo dragon. Really, the worst thing about a Komodo dragon bite is whatever they bite, it's probably going to come off. You know, so if you're bitten on the arm, they could just rip your arm off. Unknown to the Western world until 1910, and named dragons because of their semblance to the creatures of legend, these carnivorous reptiles are the largest known lizard alive today. Komodo dragons were first identified by Lieutenant Van Stein van Hunsbroek, a member of the occupying Dutch colonials. Rumors of a creature over 20 feet long spurred von Hunsbroek's curiosity. Komodo dragons, males are larger than females, but a large male might be nine, nine and a half feet long and weigh upwards of 200, a fat one would be 250 pounds. The largest Komodo dragon on record measured 10 feet long and weighed 365 pounds, one-third the size of Megalania. There was probably a common ancestor to both of those lizards, Megalania and Komodo dragons, that uh, may have been around when they were dinosaurs. But could Komodo dragons grow to the size of Megalania? It seems that these animals mutate quickly. So, for instance, it, it might only take uh, two or three generations for them to get larger. The prospect of a Komodo dragon the size of Megalania is a fearsome one. Even without a mutation, at an average size of eight feet, Komodo dragons are terrifying predators. They're both 
aggressive predators, meaning they'll go out and, and search for food, but then they're also ambush predators. These animals will feed on anything, again, including their own kind, and animals as large as water buffalo, deer, wild pigs, snakes. Among the hunted are human beings. In June 2007, Komodo Village became the scene of a horrific attack. The day began just like any other day. Kids playing and kicking around a soccer ball. No one could imagine that just 100 feet behind the village, tragedy was about to strike. Can I with the bottle on it? Leaving the game momentarily to relieve himself, an eight-year-old boy ran into the nearby shrub he had no idea a killer Komodo dragon was lurking in the bushes. The dragon knocked over the young boy and began to attack him. The boy's uncle heard the scream. The boy was screaming and asking for help. From the distance, I didn't realize the boy was beaten by the dragon. Then when I got closer, I saw the dragon biting the boy. The uncle quickly picked up a handful of rocks and started throwing them at the dragon. I wasn't scared. I was just concerned about the boy and his safety. After repeatedly hitting the dragon with stones, the uncle eventually chased it off. After I threw a few stones and the dragon left, I picked up the boy and took him to the nurse. I carried the boy to the nearest place like a hospital, but before I arrived, the boy had already passed away. And dangerous attacks continue. In June of 2008, a Swedish diver marooned on the island of Rincha faced off against a Komodo dragon. Komodo dragons, like this one, can kill buffalo and deer with their strong jaws. The dragon the divers encountered seemed hungry. It's wet suit in its mouth. So Kath, the other lady, got a stick. Uh, and this is a Komodo dragon. Kath was fighting off with a stick. Me and Helena were throwing um, boulders at it. Encountering Van Hensbrook's rumored 20-foot beast, would mean certain death. Monster Quest has mobilized a team of researchers to search the island of Rincher to find a giant Komodo dragon. Jerry Emancha and Ahmed Arifiendi are researchers for the Komodo Survival Program. They have been working with Komodo dragons for seven years. Together with a team of park rangers, they will travel by boat three hours to Rincha Island, which is located in eastern Indonesia. So we need a lot of people and a lot of gears, you know, because we will stay maybe for weeks or maybe sometimes we can take two months in the field, so we need a lot of gear. The team's first concern as they set foot on shore is with their own safety. Because sometimes Komodo dragons come to take us. I mean, in case Komodo dragons take us, so we can hold the animal like this to chase the dragon away. The wide open savanna on Rincha makes it fairly easy to see Komodo dragons in the distance. Within minutes, Ahmed spots several underneath the ranger post. Uh, I saw a big, a big males underneath the ranger post. It's quite big. I think it's a, uh, it's males, adult males. Rangers live on the island year-round. To protect themselves from unwanted visitors at night, the houses are raised up. During the hot summer months, Komodo dragons are often found under the houses in the shade. Maybe the dragon smells food from the ranger station, so they came here quite a lot, and they get used to see humans, so they're not really afraid of humans. There are several of the creatures lurking in the village. The cool morning air means the animals are sleeping, which allows the researchers to brave close proximity. But when it's active, 
by nine o'clock they become active, I can get this close to the animals. It's a hopeful sign. Uh, we'll find a bigger one, the biggest one if we can find. They begin their search past the ranger stations in the forested area of the island. As the sun rises higher in the sky, the temperature rises. Then a possible food source. Ahmed, then a possible food source. Ahmed believes where there's food, there are Komodo dragons. There's a big old buffalo. I think it's old enough, then maybe he will become a food for the dragons. But you know, one buffalo uh, can feed about 10 dragons. It could take as little as one average-sized Komodo dragon to bring down a one-ton buffalo. Its attack pattern would be as swift as it is brutal, as Trooper Walsh explains. And all they need to do is bite the rear tendon of a foot and, you know, it'll cut the tendon, the animal will eventually go down, it'll bleed. And if the animal doesn't bleed to death, their toxic saliva will finish the job. Komodo saliva is filled with over 50 strains of deadly bacteria. Their bite infects their prey and causes sepsis. And it's been found that they have quite a few very intense, very virulent uh, bacteria, which would cause an animal to not only have blood loss in a bite, but to get a really bad infection very quickly. As the toxins enter the bloodstream, the dragon's victim slowly succumbs to poisoning, heart failure, and death. As the day nears its end, the team comes up with a plan. Yeah, maybe we can try to hang the bait near the camp okay. to attack the dragons. To attract the dragons. Now that the dragons look like they are afraid of humans, but once they smell meat, they are not afraid of anything. The team heads back out onto the island this time with a goat carcass for bait. They hang the goat high in a tree over the valley. Big Komodo dragons cannot climb the tree, so the Komodo cannot reach it, but they will hang around here, but they usually they try to reach it. The bait is hung low enough to lure in the creature, but not so low as to be torn down before the team returns. And it doesn't take long to get noticed. Monster Quest has traveled Indonesia in search of a monster-sized Komodo dragon. Day one of the expedition revealed only average-sized Komodo dragons. To lure in a monster, the team hung the carcass of a large goat in a tree. The following morning brings news. The bait has worked. The rangers just, just told me that there's a big one uh, next to the place that we hang the goat. So there's, yeah, it looks like all the big males just smells the, the meat and they just camp from all over the place to hunt the meat. There are several large and deadly males in the group, but from a distance it is impossible to distinguish exact length. The only way to find out is to capture one. This is the plan that we will, we will attract the dragons uh, come to, to us and someone will hold the noose and we'll noose the, uh, the dragons and the rest of us will uh, grab the tails to secure, secure the tails because the, uh, the tails can whip us and it's quite dangerous. Okay, baik, baik, baik kepala. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, aman. Oke. Okay. Hati-hati kepala. Tangan. Saya pegang ekor. Sampai ikat. Sampai kasih. Okay. So the first thing we have to tape them out to secure the jaws. Securing the jaws is essential if the team is to avoid becoming the creature's next victim. The dragon's uh, length is 2.2 meters. I think the dragon's is big enough but it's not the biggest one. At just over seven feet, it is relatively small for a Komodo dragon. But the team is being stalked by something even larger. But there's a big, another big one coming, so we have to, uh, we have to release the animals. One, two, three. 
The largest dragon they have seen this day comes toward the group. Okay. It's quite strong animal. We almost we almost messed up. But yeah, at the end we can handle this animal. Everybody okay? It's um 2.73 273 centimeters so it's about 2.7 meters like this wow it's quite big, quite big. 2.9 in Rincha so I think it's probably almost the biggest one in Rincha over 9 feet long and weighing more than 160 pounds but could these islands hide an even bigger one the island of Komodo contains an even larger population of Komodo dragons but due to the dense vegetation, they have more places to hide and are more dangerous to pursue. The team agrees, if there is a monster Komodo dragon, this is the most likely habitat and the best place to search. One continent away, the Monster Quest team is searching for a lizard over three times the size of the one caught on Rintra, the Megalania, whose name means ancient giant butcher. Australia's Walemi National Forest is the hotbed of sightings and the location of recent tracks of a possible monster lizard. The research team is preparing to head out into the night to continue their search for Megalania. We've been out in the day and uh, a lot of the uh, uh, Australian animals are nocturnal so we're going to see what we can turn up here at night. The team will search near where they've placed both camera traps. Yeah exploring with night vision lights. We've got three red LED lights here. Uh, they're red for, for looking for animals at night because uh, most mammals, anyway, can't see red light. Throws a really uh, uh, large uh, beam of red light and we can see a really long way. And it really makes things visible. The LED lights make everything visible within 100 feet a perfect range for searching in the thick forest and for avoiding dangerous predators in the dark. Uh, we're, we're looking for rare animals uh, and even the common animals are often difficult to see. The team is careful to monitor their course. They do not want to risk getting off track and lost. There's places here where if you leave the track and go 20 foot into the scrub you can't see the track. They continue forward. So far, no sign of any life. We haven't seen anything, but uh, spotlighting is all about going out again and again and again. The hours go by and still nothing. Oh, we're giving it a good go, indeed. They decide to break for the night and come back in the morning. Tomorrow may bring the answers they've been looking for. The bait is gone. Now, what do you think? We've definitely got some sort of predatory animal. Perhaps we've even got a photograph of, uh, of Megalania. 48 pictures. Dragons conjure up images of fire-breathing flying beasts. And while there is no evidence that this type of creature is anything more than a myth made up of some of man's worst fears, there may be other giant reptilian monsters equally as terrifying roaming the earth. This team is out to capture a monster lizard. This man says that Megalania was truly the most feared animal of its time. This man says the first Australian Aborigine settlers lived in constant fear of the creature. And this man claims it still lives, and he has the cast of tracks to prove it. I say anything that's adapted to that, 
territory could survive there for thousands of years without anyone knowing it. With the assistance of Australian tracking guide Gary Opert and reptile expert Tony Gerard, Rex Gilroy has spent several days of searching Australia's Walemi National Forest in search of the monster. Well, you've got an accessible country here that white man hasn't been into yet, and I don't think ever will. So far, their search has come up empty, but the camera traps may still provide the proof they are looking for. Uh, we've had our camera traps out for a couple days, and hopefully we've got some images of some kind. The team is anxious to find out if the bait they hung is still around. Their excitement is quickly dashed. Looks like nothing took our bait. Okay, uh, there's not much uh, else we can do but to take this camera back and go check the next one. Says we've got two pictures. But as the team arrived at the final camera trap, a surprise. You know what, I don't see our bait hanging there. Both pieces of meat are gone from the tree. The team is anxious to see what could have eaten them. That's interesting. 48 pictures. Gerard removes the memory card from the trap. Could it contain evidence of megalania? As the team heads back to download the final photos, in Melbourne, John Long has received a copy of Gilroy's 2007 cast. He isn't convinced. Just comparing the symmetry of the toe pattern on the foot and the hand, and it's nothing like this. So I would say this is nothing to do with a creature like this. Well, for a start, these have got very short digits 1 and 5 and long digits 2 and 3, uh, 2, 3 and 4. And if you look at the hind foot, the digits are far more asymmetrical, whereas this is perfect symmetry. It's like it's been made up. But a clear photograph of Megalania would dispel much of the doubt surrounding the existence of this prehistoric relic. Gilroy's camera has captured some of the images, and the bait was missing. Unfortunately, it wasn't the work of lizards. In this case, inspection of the images reveals it was ravens. Gilroy isn't surprised or dissuaded. I suspect that sooner or later, through persistence, I've got to get something on film. I'd like it to be Megalania. The more we do this kind of thing, the, uh, the greater the chance of success. At the same time, the team in Indonesia moves their search from the island of Rincha to Komodo, where there is a much higher population of Komodo dragons. But the dense vegetation will make finding them more of a challenge. The habitat is more forest. So maybe there's maybe there's dragons around us, but they hiding. It's it's quite difficult to find dragons in the forest rather than in savannas. If the monster lizard exists here, they are convinced this is where they will find it. Komodo Island is teeming with wildlife, including deer and wild boar, animals that serve as essential food for the ambush predator. As the day wears on the group decides to split up. Okay guys, let's spread out. See something? No, I didn't see anything over here. I only see deer and boar, no dragons here. But there are signs that Komodo dragons are nearby. I, I find uh, dragon's teeth. We can find the dragons, but we, we find the teeth buried under the ground. You see that uh, this teeth had a serrated area. It's make it very sharp. It's like razor blade sharp. Hours go by with nothing. We saw a lot of deer around here. Usually if there's a deer, there's always a common the dragons. And then they happen across a rare occurrence that offers some insight. I think the uh, mating season make most of the males go away to find the females for mating. The expedition draws to a close, but the team believes a giant may still be out there. The most fascinating about dragons is the size of the animals. The Komodo is the biggest. Or are they? Komodo dragons themselves were an unknown animal only a century ago. What else could lurk in the most remote reaches of the planet 
still undiscovered. There's a lot of inaccessible country up there, and I say anything could live out there, and you wouldn't know it. Uh, you'd hide an army of dinosaurs there if you wanted to. The chase goes on. Smelling it. Oh. 